Hello there. I'm making this video in response to a common error that I see coming out of the clinic at almost a daily basis. And that has to do with vertical orientation or vertical inclination in peripical imaging. Typically this occurs with maxillary and the posteriors, but I've seen it anywhere. And so the short little succinct title of this video is oral radiology, proper vertical inclination in the posterior peripical radiograph, or why is the zygomatic process always in the way? So if you notice that the zygomatic process is consistently overlapping the apices of your molar teeth, then this video could be helpful for you to figure out how to avoid that. Okay, first of all, this is a, a set of radiographs that was sent to me to look at as just an example of the common excessive vertical inclination that's done in our radiographs. And honestly, this one wasn't that bad of an example. If I get my pointer here, you can see there is some separation of the buccal and the palatal apices. I think a little bit of a separation is not bad. In fact, that helps you diagnose each one individually. But you can tell there is a little bit of excessive vertical angulation. There's some foreshortening of the teeth, separation of the buccal and lingual cusps as well. In this case, the zygomatic process is projected posteriorly. And so this radiograph was taken more from a mesial tilt, kind of angulated mesially and too far from the superior because we're creating that foreshortening. In this one as well, now you see a little bit more of the zygomatic process. In both of these, the zygomatic process kind of lines up with the floor of the maxillary sinus. And so that's the first example that was pointed out to me. I didn't think it was that bad. As I started noticing more and more, we really do see this a lot. These were cases that were sent to me not to look at the quality, but just incidentally, I wanna point out Look at the zygomatic process here. It really overlaps the roots of this first molar tooth. The zygoma itself overlaps the roots of both the first and second molar, makes it really tough to diagnose the, the roots, the apices of these teeth. On the other side here, this is just a premolar shot, but you can still appreciate the degree of steepness, the inclination, because we really get foreshortening of these teeth. They're really warped and skewed. This is not the best for diagnosis. One more example here. Again, the same thing on the patient's right side. Zygomatic process projected over the apices of the teeth. The zygoma itself projected over the first and second molar roots. Makes it difficult to interpret if you have peripical pathology going on. On this side, again, a little bit mesial inclination. So we see both the premolars, but the zygomatic process is projected posteriorly. And so this is how it happens. I think we've learned really well, and this may be a self-inflicted wound, that we've taught you students, we've taught you how to really capture the apices by, by more apical inclination. For the maxilla, that's more superior inclination. You come down on it and you really project the roots of these teeth onto the image plate. So that's a good thing to do when you're taking a really long rooted tooth. Some people have canines that I swear are five centimeters long, they go up into their orbits. And if you wanna capture those apices, you have to almost do an occlusal radiograph and come down on it. And then the inverse is going to be true for the mandible. You have to come from below and that'll help you capture the apices. But as those examples I've just shown you, I think a lot of times we're doing this excessively. And so flatten out that angle a little bit. So how to properly align it. You don't need even a 45 degree angulation, which it looks like most of us are doing. Just a 5 to 10 degree vertical inclination for the maxilla. Negative inclination for the mandible. And you should still be able to capture the roots. You'll capture the crowns of the teeth better that way. And it'll be a lot more diagnostic. So I'm going to show you an example on one of our Dexter mannequins of how that's done. It seems like a lot of students will come really far from above for maxillary periapicals just to make sure you capture the apices. But it's so foreshortened that you kind of skew the whole image and it's difficult to interpret. And so what looks like is happening, students are are putting the sensor in just at a really steep angle, almost like an occlusal, like this. And then get in here. So he's not really bit on the bite tab. And this will help capture the apices, but it's, it's not the best angulation. It's harder to diagnose. So we'll show you what that looks like in this mannequin. So your periapical posterior. So if I follow that parallel, it's lined up at a really steep angulation. Hard to even see if I'm horizontally correct or not. So what do we notice in this radiograph? 
yeah, you've captured the apices, but can I diagnose anything with the overlap of my favorite anatomical structure, which all my students know what that is? Zygomatic process just goes right over the roots of the second molar. In some cases, you see it over the roots of the first molar as well. And so let's see how we correct that. Let's do some more proper angulation. So basically what I'm going to do is just flatten this out a bit. Make sure he's bit on the bite tab. To do that, sometimes you have to push it further into the patient's mouth. Find that deepest part of the palate where it can really go up there. And there's going to be maybe a little bit of vertical angulation, but not nearly as much as I just showed you. And when he bites down, he's bit down almost to the second molar, maybe between that first and second molar. And now if I do parallel, you're going to see the difference here. Just a little bit of positive vertical angulation coming down at it. And see how that affects our diagnoses of the, of the apices. Now we don't even see the zygomatic process of the maxilla. I see plenty of the roots, so I didn't need that steep of angulation to capture it. But it just looks a lot better. Maybe just to, just to show you the same thing with the premolar. Come over here. I'm just going to slide this forward, do a little, middle, little bit of mesial angulation rotation. There it goes. Make sure your patient's biting down all the way. And so again, just come in parallel. It doesn't have to be a super steep angulation to capture the apices. That looks really nice. So this is what we'd like to see, as opposed to a lot of what we're seeing is like this. So hopefully that helps. Same thing with the mandible. I see a lot of coming really steeply from below. You can kind of flatten that out and still capture the apices in 99% of patients. So let me know if you have any questions, but hopefully that's helpful.